Good morning. Good morning. Great morning to everybody. This is Morning Manifestations with yours truly, Apostle Gary Deloach, and this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. You will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. Why? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, for this is the day. Yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. This, I love to sing that. That's the verse of scripture. In the Psalms, this is the day. Yesterday is past. Today is now. And every day that we awaken by the hand, the merciful hand of the Lord, we should declare what his word says, that this is the day that the Lord has made. And whatever God makes, he makes it for purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every day has a purpose. That's why I love Psalm 90. Around 11 and 12, 12. Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts or one translation says that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Every day God has something that he wants to do for us, through us, in us, for us, amen. And I love the fact that God is for us. He created us for his own purposes. So we welcome every one of you to come in and join us for this uh, wonderful Bible study. I believe it's appropriate. I believe it's timely. I believe it's very significant uh, concerning our walk with the Lord because we have been assigned and ordered by God to worship him in spirit and in truth, in spirit, and in truth, should be part of our daily lifestyle. So I'm Apostle Gary Deloach, and yes, this is uh, morning manifestations, manifestation, uh, man, the word manifest itself means to make known. What are we doing? Making known God's will for our lives. His word is his will. You find his will in his word. So what is it that he wants us to do? Search the scriptures. For in them ye think that ye have eternal life, and they are they, they, the scriptures, are they which testifies of him, speaks of him, tells us all we need to know about him. His profile is in the scriptures, in, in his word. How do we find out who God is? In his word. Welcome, my sweetheart, Lady Rhonda. Deloach, yes, uh, Lady Rhonda, to you, I have many private names for her, pet names, wonderful names, which that's not your concern. <laughs> Amen. Love that woman. Thank God for blessing me with her. And she's supporting, amen, the ministry. She's a vital part of the ministry. She's supporting. So glad to have you on board. <clears throat> Amen. Excuse me. I want many of you, everybody that's coming in, it, at least three, three to five people I want you to tag. You got a list of friends. Tag them. Invite them to a watch party and say, we need to hear what God is saying through the apostle concerning kingdom worship. And let me declare, these are the days of of the kingdom. These are the days of the kingdom. Jesus said, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom 
of God is within you. Welcome, Lady Hankins, all the way from Mississippi. Good to see you join in. God bless you and your husband, my friend, the Apostle uh, Hankins. So let's go into this time of sharing, and we want to know all about the kingdom. Uh, my good friend, um, talked to him last night, uh, uh, Pastor Philip Tarver, who used to Lead, be the lead singer for Shekinah Glory. They did a song some years ago in one of their recordings that was very popular, and it was entitled, It's All About the Kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. Yes, it is. So if it's all about the kingdom, what are the, what are the, uh, what's the culture of the kingdom? The lifestyle, the culture, the way we live in the kingdom, the rules, the laws, the mores, the standard of living, the practices. Yes. So if we're in this kingdom, we have to know, amen, what God says, says about it, even concerning the, our, the, our prayer life, amen, how we know about him, how we study the word, what's given unto us, what our privileges and blessings are that he has afforded to us, but most certainly and most significant as pertains to this study, how we are to worship. And I made an analogy in my syllabus. Uh, if you want to know about my syllabus, it's a teaching booklet, strongly outlined. Um, I've done it, uh, for, I've used it for years. I teach out of my syllabus most of the time. I have a section in there that talks about Amen. Uh, how to worship the Lord, how that worship, amen, is born in the heart of God. It comes from God. If we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. Now, what does that say? That says simply that he gives us the desires to, to, to desire him with. He puts the love in our heart to love him with. And worship is like a marriage relationship. Amen. He is the husband man, amen. We are the bride and he has the right as being the focus of our worship to tell us how he wants to be worshiped. And he said that specifically in St. John 4 to the woman who was at the well. And he said to her, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship in spirit. That's through the auspices of Holy Spirit, knowing him, and then truth, truth, truthful, intentional, glory to God. And when the truth, and I'm going to share some things today that really, hopefully it will just wow you. I won't say blow your mind, but cause you to lose your mind of what you thought of it in the past that maybe you hadn't heard of. Revelation calls our eyes <clears throat> to come open. Amen. He wants to be worshiped a certain way, and we want to give it to him. Well, I want to make one observation here. Amen. Tonight is the continuation, and I'm delighted to say continuation of our family prayer revival. Family prayer revival that God gave us to, to uh, do it starting several months ago. I haven't counted the months. I don't know if my wife knows how long we've been in this, but God ordained it. He says, I want you to begin to pray and use your uh, prayer line, your prayer line. We're doing it on the phone. Amen. Uh, back during times when some of the meetings were curtailed, but the Lord said, he says, you know, they don't need to see you. Nobody need to see each other because God is a spirit. Come on. We can be in one accord, even praying through the airways. Thank God for different platforms. Thank you for the phone line. We have YouTube. We're on YouTube. Amen. Right now. We're on Facebook right now. But thank God that we can still communicate through or by the phone line. And we've been doing it, and God says, I'm going to save families. I'm going to restore families. Do you know God has kept his word? As we keep our word to him, as we come into agreement 
with what he says, results always come because God is not a God that he should lie. He says, I'm going to restore broken marriages. I'm going to restore uh, broken things in the family. I'm going to bring wayward children back into the fold. We see that happening. What did Isaiah 60 say? He said this, he says, your sons shall come from afar. Amen. And, and in many cases, they may not be coming back to the city where the per parentals or the parents live, but God bringing them back into the fold of salvation, family salvation, family salvation. We're seeing it happen. Uh, young children, sons and daughters praying with us. Families, parents in this ministry have reached out. I've reached out to family members coming on the line, nieces and nephews, children, and God is doing something. He's healing, healing, come on. Healing is still present. It's not a foregone conclusion. It's not over. We're in the day of signs and wonders. There'll be miracles, signs and wonders as we worship and as we pray. So I want to bring that to you. Amen. We are having our family prayer revival again this evening at 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. We are actually Central Standard Time is changing. We're about to go to the Standard Time, but Central Daylight Time, 7 p.m. Glory to God. Amen. If you're on the East Coast, that's 8 p.m., if you on the west west coast, that's 5 p.m. Amen. So yes, and if it's if you're at mountain time, I'm thinking that is an hour behind us. Yes, that would be 6 p.m. So join us from wherever you are. They've been coming on at different times from Las Vegas, Nevada, Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Mississippi. Want you to join us. Come on, somebody. Pastor John Willis. Yes, uh, Lady Hankins. Yes, I want to reach out to my friends, uh, Pastor Jesse Holloway. We are bringing our families on the line. The Lord is breaking soul ties, breaking soul ties and family curses. Amen. We're seeing him do it, releasing the family. So you want to come on. Amen. At 7 p.m. now, okay, I want to give you the conference line so that you can have access. I love the word access. Have entrance. So you can get in. <laughs> We're talking about sonship on Sunday evenings. I'm talking about the stages. And one of those stages, the infant, amen, while he's an heir, he can, uh, he owns everything, but he doesn't have access to the resources that he owns because of the immaturity. So, but the mature son has access to everything that he owns. We can appropriate the blessings of God through prayer. And as we understand this, we come together and the corporate anointing is stronger than the individual anointing. Here's the conference line upon your screen. There it is, 267-807-9611. Again, 267-807-9611. And the access code is 577-327-POUND or for the younger generation hashtag. Yes, my wife likes to say POUND. Okay, uh, access code again, 577-327, hashtag or POUND. And there you will come in. We usually open the lines at 10 minutes prior to seven, before seven, and you're gonna come in and you're gonna hear uh, worship music. I'm gonna be playing the keyboard, sometimes singing. We're just setting the atmosphere for the move of God, setting the atmosphere for God to speak to us as we rebuke our own ideas so that God's way, God's will. We don't know what to pray for, as we are, Romans 8.26, amen. To have a Romans 8.26 moment, which we anticipate every time we gather, 
we rebuke our own ideas. We we don't know. We don't you know. We have topics that we want to pray for because certain things that concern the family. He's given us orders and instructions to pray for those you know things. Bind and loose. Bind and loose. Tie up. Bind the enemy. Come on, and then release God's will, His power into situations. And we're praying with all forms of prayer. Ephesians 6, 18 tells us to keep on praying in the spirit at all times with all kinds of prayer. Come on, all kinds of prayer. We're doing intercession. We're doing proclamation and declare decrees. Amen. This is the decade of pace still. Come on, the decade of the mouth or the decade of speaking and we are living, breathing, speaking spirits. Hallelujah. God created us so. And when we speak his word, the word of God has created power. We call things that be not as though they were. Peter was unstable at a time when his name was Simon and Jesus spoke to him prophetically. He said, <laughs> Simon, you are unstable. Simon, Simon. He said, Simon, Satan desires to have you as sweet, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. And when you're converted, in other words, you are going to be changed. This is not your final state. Come on, you're not to be judged by who and what you are now. You're going to grow into the man of God that has been ordained for you to be. So the corporate anointing and, and 826 of Romans says, we don't know what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession. He is a part of us, Holy Spirit. He gets the burden from God. And he prays it through to bring forth, forth God's desired result. I want to throw my hand up on that. He, he prays through us with words that cannot be uttered in our natural understanding. He keeps us from praying selfish individual prayers for just our families. We are praying for families all over the world because the family, hallelujah, it's God's smallest cell group, smallest battle formation, but it's one of his, but his most powerful glory to God in the earth. So we want you to come in. There's, there's the number on the screen. And that's the main announcement that I wanted to give to you today. We'll come back a little later, amen, and do some others. But right now, we are ready to get into this word. Let me just say this. We're on YouTube, and I'm not going to put it up on the screen there. I want you to just come in. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Um, we're, we're on uh, YouTube right now. All you got to do is go in and type in Gary Deloach Ministries. And when you get in there, we want you to like us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All of these teachings that I've done on, on even on uh, kingdom worship, the ones that I've done on prayer and intercession, they are all out there uploaded for your uh, blessing, for your convenience to go in there and redo it again. I love the word meditate, cogitate, and ruminate. Amen. Cogitation and meditation, like the child, the cow, the cow, <laughs> the farm animal, choose the cud. He has more than one stomach. He passes, he chews in one stomach and passes to another and keeps breaking it down. That's, way, that's the way we should do the word. Meditate. That means to pleasantly murmur over and over the word again. Because you get more the next time than you did the first time. Amen. The late uh, evangelist Melvin Lewis Smith used to always say it like this, let's take another look. <laughs> If he was teaching on prayer, let's take another look at prayer. Let's take another look at worship because the second time around and the third time around, it's happened to me. And when we search the scriptures, we find out so much more. So go out there to our YouTube channel and get as much our praise conference uh, that we have been doing for the last uh, 
five, six years. We did it virtually in January of this year, and what a powerful time. You, you want to go, if you've never done it, go out there and look at our praise conference. Every day is full of teaching, night services, amen, and different speakers from across the country that were a blessing not just to us here locally, but to the entire body of Christ and everyone that had the opportunity to watch it. All right. Amen. Yes. Wife has put up there that we've been in this prayer revival since March 2021, March of this year, and we're still there. And we're not going to stop until the Lord gives us the release, but he ordained it and told us what he's going to do. So this is what we're embracing and we're thanking God for what he's doing in the lives of families, in the life of families everywhere. So yes, we're going to continue today on this topic. Now again, everybody reach out, share with somebody, tag somebody, and tell them, get in this study. Amen. It's going to be good today. I believe it's going to be powerful today. Amen. Because the word of God is quick and powerful. We've talked about so much and defined and redefined the word worship. And along the way, I said to you that we're going to do, use several definitions because they're all appropriate definitions. Amen. Jesus took the time to stop by Samaria. There was a pull on him. And I'm going back there because we started pretty much talking about New Testament worship. And the one thing we're going to know that the Old Testament, and you've heard this before, is the, was, is the New Testament concealed. There was New Testament in the Old Testament, prophetic future, prophetic things that had not been manifested. Oh, there's my word. Made known yet prophetically some things were spoken, but the activation or the demonstration of it had not come in to fruition. There was a set time for it to be realized. Amen. Amen. And the New Testament, of course, is the uh, Old Testament reveal. Things that were spoken, prophetic words, type and typology, things that pointed toward a future were revealed in the New Testament. So we needed to define worship uh, in all of its forms. But the kingdom we talked about, worship is a kingdom culture. It's a culture. Jesus said that they must worship. Look at what, what it said in the Old Testament, Isaiah 42. And 21, he says, this people have I created for myself. I have chosen for myself and they, hallelujah, shall show forth, demonstrate, show forth my praise. We're going to talk a little bit today about worship, not just being the act. It's been reduced to an act or action. Amen. An act or an action. It's, it is, that's part of it, but it's also an attitude. It's also a lifestyle. Hallelujah. This people have I chosen for myself. They will show forth my praise. So it's God's call. It's God's choice. He chose us to worship him in a certain way. So he let the woman know he defined it. Amen. So it is so many things. And we're going to go a little further today and get into something called uh, the sacrifice of praise. I want to give you uh, some more definition. Definition. So when we consider all of the words uh, that's been used for worship in both the Old and New Testament, and when we put the meanings together, that's what... Uh, I'm attempting to do all across this study. If you would go back and get some of the old teachings, some of the other teachings and look at it on YouTube, amen, you will see that we've attempted to do that for you to bring the meanings together, amen, so that it can make uh, perfect sense to us. 
Amen. But bringing the meanings together, we find that worship involves both attitudes. I did a message years ago called the attitude of worship. It involves attitudes. And let me just give you some words for attitude. Attitudes all in the presence of God. Our attitude toward God is all. Um, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Oh, our God, awesome. I stand, I stand in awe of you. That means I'm overwhelmed. That means I'm in the presence of a great God. And it's like it's hard to fathom and imagine that you're that close to God, but awestruck. When somebody's awestruck, it's like your breath is taken away. You don't even have words to describe. Uh, what is that song we do in worship, my sweetheart, that I love to uh, sing about? Uh, indescribable, indescribable. Uh, the one I was just doing. I stand in awe. Um, uh, Wonderful beyond description to marvelous for words. I have nothing but awe because of your awesome power. What you're showing me, all is one of the attitudes. Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't think of the song right now, but there's another beautiful song we sing about indescribable. You're indescribable. Can't describe you. Never met. You know, never encountered this kind of power, this splendor, this glory before. So I'm in awe. The attitude of uh, all reverence, reverence is respect, is a high, high respect for an awesome God who is deity, an awesome respect, reverential respect. Mm. And attitude is also, um, it's reverence, it's respect, it's paying homage, loyalty to. And the actions that we're talking about as we're bringing these meanings together, actions of worship are bowing. I say in my syllabus that um, uh, these are some of the um, outer manifestations of worship, amen. Uh, extroverted nature, the extroverted nature of worship, the lifting of the hands, those are actions, the clapping of the hands, the dancing, hallelujah, the shouting, those are only the extroverted elements or actions, amen, of worship, bowing, praising God, serving him. But, and it is both a subjective, subjective, experience in an objective activity, subjected, subjective, let me get my words untwisted, a subjective experience, amen, and uh, also an objective activity, objective. What is the objective? Jesus is the object of our worship. Jesus is the focal point of our worship. God is the focal point. And they are one of our worship. So in our worship, God, uh, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and Holy Spirit are all involved in our worship. That's an interconnection. So worship is not just uh, in an unexpressed feeling. There's expression. We have to use our love to express toward him. It's not an unexpressed feeling not an empty formality, not a form of godliness, not just something we do because that's part of the quote, uh, selective or ordained program. Remember, I've talked about how that, that we've got to get away from being program-based churches. God established the church as a worshiping community. We must be worshiping churches. I don't want to be a part of any local fellowship that doesn't allow the people to praise and to worship God. This is what God has ordained because he speaks strongly out of his presence. 
Amen. Yeah, I want to hear the Lord. Amen. There are times when the worship will be the only thing that will happen because God ordains it so. Out of his presence at Antioch in the 13th chapter of Acts. Remember, there was a group of, of presbyters, fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, amen, evangelists, pastors, and teachers were all gathered. And while they, the Bible says, as they ministered to God with fasting, wow, they had done the right things. They had met the criteria to hear from God. Anytime the word minister to God is used, that phrase, it means that they were worshiping God in prayer, praise, and worship. That's how we minister to God. Our ministry to God is prayer, it is praise, it is worship. And guess what? He responds to our ministry and ministers back to us by healing, come on, save, set, salvation, come on, uh, deliverance, healing, yes. He blows those things back. He throws those things back down. Come on, when Paul and Silas begin to pray and sing praises in that Philippian jail, that dungeon, the Bible says that heaven shook, came, the power of God came down and shook the very foundation of that prison. What happened? How did that happen? They set up a ministry of prayer and worship and praise to God. And God did what's equivalent in uh, Revelation chapter uh, eight, chapter five, where he talked about the prayers of incense, when it got in the nostrils of God. Come on, God literally threw them back down to earth. Glory to God. The angels used the censer and set fire to the prayers. Their praise and their worship was so intense that God literally threw back down his response to the earth by blowing up the jail, shaking the foundation, and freeing them and the fellow prisoners. God made a statement as a result of the praise that went forth. So what am I saying? I'm saying worship is not a formality. It's none of that. True worship, true worship is balanced. It's balanced and it involves the mind, the will, and the emotions, the heart. It's in the mind, the mind is in the heart. You cannot worship without your heart. They that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Heart worship, hallelujah. The mind, the will, and the emotions are involved when we worship God. So that's sincere. That's a statement. It's not a form. It is the whole being being yielded to God to give him what he wants. Amen. And it, it, is, it is not, yeah, praise is a command. Amen. Uh, it's a command. But we still have to worship. I'm going to show you, and I've spoken, I think, maybe once before, how that, uh, along with the sacrifice, Leviticus 22 and 29 talks about the importance of your will in offering. Worship is an offering. By him, therefore, Hebrews 13, 15, by him, that's Jesus, therefore, let us offer unto God the sacrifice of praise, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto him. First of all, he says, let us offer. Let's bring an offering of worship. That's what we're called to do. But in Leviticus, the Old Testament, now we're bringing it together. All of these definitions, all of these instances and occurrences, the Old Testament, God instituted even then uh, the sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord to offer at your own will. It was instituted, the rule of thanksgiving under the law. That didn't come in the New Testament. The rule of thanksgiving, the necessity of thanksgiving, the protocol, come on somebody, Yes, the order. See, 
We're in the time of resetting things, realignment to get things back in proper alignment. You realign something. When the doctors sometimes go and you got a, something's growing wrong, sometimes they will break a bone in order to realign it to get it back into its proper alignment or order. We have good intentions sometimes in the body of Christ. And what happens, when, but, but when we get out of the due order that God has established, we in, it's an invitation. Listen to me good. It's an invitation to the Philistine cart mentality to bring in something that's not in the order of God, throws off the order of God, and God dismisses himself. The presence of God is not there because he only comes, he only endorses what he has established as his order. He only embraces, he only inhabits, Psalm 22, for thou, O Lord, inhabits the praises of Israel, the people of God. We are spiritual Israel. He inhabits, he sits, he comes where? He enthrones, three places he enthrones upon. He is enthroned in heaven. He has a throne in heaven that he sits upon. He's worshiped in heaven by the angels. Jesus is on the right hand of his father. They're thrones. It's an elevated place. It's a high place. I, the Lord, uh, Isaiah 57 says, I live in a high, in a lofty place. So we got to give high praise. Somebody's come on, right, right in the comments that he deserves high praise. Come on. He demands high praise. Come on. He's a great God. So there's nothing that, 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 that I'm going to give him that's not lifted up and high and worthy of the God that he is. Amen. He says he will not give his glory to another. And one thing God won't do, he won't let another rival his praise. What's due to him must be given to him. So he instituted in the Old Testament, amen, the law or the rule of thanksgiving. Amen. He says, and if and when you sacrifice, and when you will offer a sacrifice, he says, Leviticus 22, 29, you can find it written there. And when you will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. Even though it's a command, you must be willing to do it. David says, Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. I want to. Jesus said to the leper, uh, when the leper came, crying to him and says, Master, if you will, you can heal me. If you want to, Jesus says, I want to be healed. And the man was healed. Your will. So let me get back to it. So it involves, worship involves the mind, the will, and the emotions. It's not listening to good preaching. That's not worship. It's not even great singing. That's not the sum total of worship. Amen. And certainly not to a performance. My God. Come on. <laughs> we got to resist that Philistine cart mentality. Keeping the order of God. The order. The order. Amen. It is fellowship with God himself. That's a real simple definition. Fellowship with God himself. It is communion, a communion of our soul with God. Soul, the emotions, the emotions are in the soulish realm. It is communication. Uh, in my syllabus, I talk about how worship is like marital love, communication. The two become one. The two become intimate. Come on. Uh, uh, intimacy involves one of the things when the Lord says in um, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, which we taught in the prayer series, you'll find that when you go out on YouTube, when he says, my people call by my name, but humble themselves, uh, pray and pray and seek my face. 
uh, face in the Hebrew text there means presence and vice versa. Presence means face. A person is identified by his face. I'm identified to many by my face. Amen. I'm identified by my face. Now, my mother is in glory. She went to be with the Lord over about five years ago. Amen. Uh, she used to say, though, she said, if you're walking down the street, glory to God, and I can't see you, but I can see enough of you to see your movement. I know you're my child. Come on, because of the way you walk, those pigeon-toed and bold, bow legs, come on, bold legs, I know you, my child, but most people know you by your face, and the Lord says for us to seek his face. So it's like marital love where there's intimate communication. I write in my syllabus also that worship is uh, giving the, the totality, our total selves to God. I'm yours. I'm yours. Here I am. Standing humbly before you to do your will and your every command. Here I am, standing humbly before you. Come on, the total giving of ourselves and our love to him. Remember, he's put the love in you to love him back with. Deep, call it unto deep. Psalm, um, hallelujah, 42, 46. Deep is calling unto deep. The spirit of the Lord is calling to his spirit that he's placed in you. He wants to commune with you, amen. I also say in my syllabus that worship is to stare in the face of God. When you communicate with someone, generally the proper way to do it is to look into the face of that someone. There's no way Lady Ronda, my wife, you know, can really uh, feel me, can I use that ex colloquial expression, to feel me if I'm trying to be serious with her and I'm looking all around the room and I'm not looking into her face. We're trying to have a serious moment or intimate moment or wanting to convey our love toward each other or just have just fellowship and not looking into each other's face because the eyes speak of something, our expressions. And remember, worship is an expression as well of our love, our uh, loyalty to him, amen. Our reverence, we use those words. Those are actions, amen. Now, those are uh, attitudes, awe rather, awe is an attitude, hallelujah. Reverence is an attitude to him. And we show it forth. We demonstrate it. Praise is not for me, it is for God. Praise, worship is for God. It is not for men. And I'm going to show you how important it is to God in his kingdom. Worship, music, God ordained music is not for secular purposes, it's for God. It's to bless God. Yes, it's to bless God. Amen. Hallelujah. So then we must understand that worship, where it comes from, is not listening to those things. It's fellowship with God himself. It's communion of our soul with God. So we see where the mind, the will, and the emotions are all necessary when it comes to to worshiping God in this way, amen. What is worship? Let me give you another definition. The word worship comes from the Old English word worship or worthship. Worth, W-O-R-T-H-S-H-I-P, -E, S-H-I-P, W-O-R-T-H-S-H-I-P. That's an Old English word, worthship. Look at the first base word worth. When we worship, to worship God in this kingdom day, anytime, even in the Old Testament, remember Old Testament, New Testament revealed. 
he says, to worship him a certain way. So worth, worth is placing value. What is the relationship that you have with the Father, with God, the Son, and Holy Spirit? What value do you put on that relationship? Everything has value, right? Everything has value. Come on, relationships that you have in life, you may even measure them. What are they on a scale of one to 10? Is it valuable? Your relationship with your spouse definitely is valuable. It has worth. Beside your relationship with God, that's your, that's your major relationship. And you do everything you can to make it even more because God, he compares Worship to marital love. He compares worship to marital love. Oh, y'all, you're with me? Y'all getting this? He compares worship to marital love. He says, my glory will I not give to another. 19 and 6 of Exodus, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. First Peter 2 and 9, he talks about that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a special people, a holy nation. Come on, that we would show forth the praises of him, demonstrate the praises of him that's done what? That's brought us out of darkness into his light, into his marvelous light. We are chosen for this, to be intimate with God. So then worship then uh, is placing value on the one who created us. Now, how do we place value on something? By offering to it. David the king, the beloved psalmist of Israel. That's what he was called. Beloved. His name meant beloved. And they called him the beloved psalmist of Israel. He was God's, he, he was God's favorite king. Oh, yes. And to prove that, all we got to do is go back to Amos. And what did God say? And is in, in Acts 2, how that in the last days, he's going to restore the tabernacle of David, not Moses. Come on not any of the other tabernacles. He's restoring the tabernacle of David. Yes, pleased him. Amen, 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 amen. So during David's time, he offers a sacrifice. Amen. He offers, a, 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 that's a cause for praise. He knew that. That his cause of sincere praise the cost of it, it'll cost you something. The sacrifices must touch us before it can touch God, must touch our flesh. It must be, it must be the release of something that touches us, that has worth to us, that causes us to realize that we're willing to give up something that means a whole lot to us. It cost him something. And that's why David, he was inspired. Amen. Because he was a giver, not just a receiver. Worshippers are givers, not just receivers. When David began to, you know, buy the threshing floor from the priest's ornament to stop the plague that was going on during that time, to stop the plague, he bought, he, he bought the threshing floor. He was, you know, and, and Ornan, the priest said, well, you know, I'll give it to you and I'll give you the offering. And David said, no, 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 no. He says, I won't give God anything that didn't cost me. I won't give God anything that didn't cost me. If it costs you, it's the, uh, let me say it like this, something when it's called the precious, that means it's a great value. And you want to handle it so that you're not willing to just give that away for any occasion. That's the precious. If it costs you, then it touches you. 
And many times people are giving offerings, whether it's monetary offerings, don't even touch you. It, it doesn't cost you. I'm willing to lose that because that doesn't mean a whole lot, but whole lot to me. Come on, I can, you know, uh, I, it won't hurt me to release that, but he wants what touches you. Ooh, because if, hey, glory to God, if it touches you, it touches him. I won't give God anything that didn't cost me. My God. So he brought his own offering. I won't. And, and what, what was the value? Many times there were thousands of sheep and bullocks brought for offerings. Placing worth, worth-ship, worth-ship. It means to ascribe worth or translated value. The sacrifice then is a loss that we incur with the hope to gain something much greater. What you lose and place that value on God and, and give it away. Worship, I give myself away, giving yourself away. The toll of yourself to God, your love, all of that is said, giving yourself. You're going to obtain something much greater, much greater. Hallelujah. Hmm. It's, it's ascribing worth, and the main Old Testament word for worship means to bow down, bow down. The Israelites approach the holy presence of God by bowing, laying, lying prostrate with holy reverence to God. To say, I'm not worthy to even look up or uh, stand before you, but reverencing you, that's being in awe. Anybody ever been awestruck before? Anybody ever been awe of uh, the love that you have with your spouse? How the love covers, and sometimes there may be something your spouse shows love to you, and you don't even have the words. Sometimes the tears may flow, and because you're realizing how great that love is, and God's love is even greater. His love never fails never gives up, never runs out. It's inexhaustible. So this is the God that we're worshiping and we're serving. So the, the Israels, the Israelites, uh, the Israelis, I almost said, the Israelis or as they call today, the Israelites in Bible times, they would lay prostrate uh, before him, amen. And in the main New Testament word for worship is to kiss toward, amen. Proskuneo, a proskuneo, it's in my syllabus, where the example is as uh, those that may have an animal, a dog that sits at the master's chair and licks his hand, come on, warming up to him. It means to kiss toward, I'm coming toward you. I'm bringing my love towards you. I'm demonstrating my love toward you. And the indicator here, the, the connotation of this word in the New Testament, it stands for submissive lowliness and deep respect. Submissive, uh, I submit myself to you. And deep respect. So when the Israelite worshiped God, he ascribed supreme worth to him. Now, nah, supreme, that nothing else can rival this offering. Nothing else can get what you get, God. Mm. <laughs> Nobody else deserves the praise that I'm to give to God. Come on, somebody. He alone deserves this kind of praise because nobody else created you but God. Nobody can heal you but God. Nobody can deliver you but God. There's no salvation in another. 
hallelujah, but it's in Jesus. My God, my God. So who is worthy to be worshiped this way? Nobody else but God. They understood as they subscribed on, uh, 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 ascribed, ascribe unto him, in Chronicles the Bible says, uh, the glory, ascribe unto him, or give unto him, put it in the right place. Give unto him the glory that's due unto his name. And then after that, it says, bring the Lord in offering. Mm. Offer unto him the sacrifice of praise. Bring something of word. Come not, in, in Exodus it said, come not before the Lord empty handed. If he means that much to you, hallelujah. We're going to give him the best. The woman that showed up at Simon's house. She gave God out of the alabaster box of ointment that was expensive, gave Jesus that, and anointed him. That's ascribing honor. Honor. Substance speaks of our understanding of honor. Substance. Substance, what do you have? What are you bringing? It speaks of our understanding. When, when someone brings something to God that's substantive, that's full of substance, it's a worthy offering. It's not something that we, you know, pinched, pinched off the bottom. It's not something that we said, oh, you know, uh, I don't need that anyway, so I'll give that. It won't hurt me. Substance reflects our understanding of honor. The Israelites understood it. We got to get it, people. We got to get it because when we do this, giving it shall be given unto you, good man, you press down, shaking together, running over. That woman came into Simon's house and she loved. Her love was manifested. Love as well as faith. Woo. Come on, apostle. Ventilates itself through giving. Faith does it. Love ventilates itself through giving. Someone composed a song. Love is not love. It isn't love until you have given it away. So my love, isn't it, is it, is it about gifts? No. Come on. Love, you know, out of the heart. Uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Come on. That's why worship must be of the heart. And God knows when it's of the heart. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My mind. So you're ventilating to God your love through your gifts, showing him his word. My time is almost up. And I'm going to honor that. It's almost up. Just a few more minutes here. So uh, that's supreme worth, supreme value to a supreme being. He's God alone. They were saying God alone is worthy. For you alone deserve all glory. For you alone deserve all praise. Father, we worship and adore you. For you alone deserve all praise. Father, we love you and we worship you this day. Oh, for you alone deserve all glory. You're the only supreme being who deserves to be worshiped this way. My God, my God, let me finish. Because God created and redeemed Israel. He entered into a covenant with Israel. We're not Israel from that day, but we're spiritual Israel. Are we excluded from worshiping God? No, 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 no. We are not excluded. 
we are included outside of the covenant. Amen. Yes, we were outside of the covenant. We were estranged from God and his promises. But, but, but we were dead. We were dead to God in our sins. But that's a conjunction. You know, come on. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Changing one mindset to another mindset. Changing from the negative, bringing us into the positive. Somebody said, but God, but by God's grace, the influence upon the heart, God's influence upon the heart in his reflection in the light, his grace that afforded us the opportunity to worship him. We are redeemed from the curse of sin through Jesus Christ. He is our savior and through him, what? Through him, we're able to offer worship to God. Hebrews 13, 15 says it. So uh, it's so apropos there. By him, therefore, by, uh, through him, we're able to offer. Through him, let us offer the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips. Uh, Isaiah talks about the calves of our lips. Hallelujah. Uh, we will bring forth the calves of our lips and we shall be healed. He will heal us as we offer the calves of the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name because it's by him. It's by Jesus. It's by his sacrifice that we are able to bring our sacrifice unto him and place value upon him for what he has done for us. And if anything else is the focus of your worship, it's idol worship. If anything else besides Jesus is the focus of your worship, it is idol worship. So as believers in Christ, we are members of his body. Amen. We are what? Chosen generation. We are a chosen generation. And we're called forth to show, demonstrate his excellence. All I require is what God has given me. <laughs> Whoa, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am, where he says I'm at. Yeah, I know who I am. Come on, I'm walking in power, working miracles, living a life of favor. You know it. Listen, let me finish this thing up. So we are chosen generation. These people have I chosen for myself. They, I've chosen them to show forth my praise. Come on, let me expound. Come on, uh, to show forth my value, show forth my work. Demonstrate that to others in the earth. Amen. We're chosen. We're chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood a holy nation, his own special people, his own prized possession. Yes, yes, that you may proclaim the praises of him. And that's what we're called to do in this kingdom day. Proclaim. Proclaim. Get it out. Make it known. Manifest the praises of him. When we come in acknowledging him, uh, I'll be talking about how we enter into the gates and get into that area of worship, but we don't come in begging and asking. We come in acknowledging who he is, calling his names, releasing his names into the atmosphere. And when we, we re release his name, many names, compound names, we are activating the character of his name, Jaira. Oh, God, we praise you today because you're Jehovah Jireh. You're the Lord that sees and knows what you see. You provide and bring forth your provision. God, we decree today. We declare you in this room as Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord that heals, heals all of our sicknesses and all of our diseases. We declare that you are Jehovah, Jehovah Makedes. You are the God who sanctifies us. We're sanctified in you and through your sacrifice. You are 
Jehovah, my God, Rohi, Roha, you are shepherd. We shall not want for anything. And we declare you in this room as Lord, you're the King of Kings. We build the throne for you, sit upon your throne, for you are Jehovah Shalom. Your peace is here. And before you know it, before you can get to one song, the atmosphere is charged with every, all these names of God and who he is. Healing just begins to happen. I know what I'm talking about. See that glory to God. Healing just happens while worship is going on. We hadn't listened to one word preached, but God is preaching through his worship. He speaks out of his presence. Uh, some years ago, we were in a service and worship, and we would do this. We'd walk the floor declaring, proclaiming the names. Come on, it 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 was uh, it was commanded by God. Remember, worship is and praise is a ministry commanded by God. Had to do it, and still have to do it in our services where I pastor. We're going to proclaim the name of God. We're going to worship it. And we were just getting the word in the air. We do that in our prayer services and had a visited young lady, one of the members bought. And I'm walking down the aisle, just worshiping God. Yeah, I've gotten off the music because God says, I want them to come on. I want them to make melody in their hearts unto me. He said, I want to hear them. He said, son, walk the floor, walk. And as you make melody in your heart, as you lift, my name's up, and I begin to, we begin to lift up the name of Jesus as a healer. Little did I know, when Holy Spirit told me to lay my hands on a young lady there that was the visitor of one of our members, put my hand on her left ear. Hallelujah. And her, she was deaf. I didn't know she was deaf, totally deaf in that left ear. Amen. And, and her ear popped open. She screamed out and told the member, shouted out, I can hear. It started to weep. My member started to weep. And, and we just began to know God had done something. Waited a while and she began to lift her hands up. She and the member of our church began to embrace because God had done something in the presence, in his presence as we worshiped him, as we declared his name, glory to God. We built that throne for him. And they brought her forth and she told she had been deaf for many years. Beautiful young lady. But God healed her from her deafness. He will do that. We'll call the worshiper this way. Hallelujah. That we show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. So then, and we're a holy nation. He's called us out of darkness to his light, marvelous light. We who were once not a people, Amen. This is 1 Peter 2, 9 through 11. But are now the people of God. And what do the people of God do? They praise him. What do the people of God do and to, before the Lord? When they come, and, and, it's, and, and remember, praise, and we don't have time to get into it today, but next teaching, I'm going to touch that real strong. Uh, three different levels of praise. That's corporate worship, corporate praise and worship. There's uh, family praise and worship. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We got to do it on all levels. Amen. Amen. Come on. Uh, those levels, we're going to do it. Amen. We're going to worship individually. We have to have just like an individual time of prayer. You need an individual time of worship. Jesus had it. Many of his followers had it. Individual times. Then family times. You and the spouse worshiping God like you prayed together. And then corporate worship on all three levels, but we are a people now. And as the church, then we come to God, the Father, through the agency of God, the Son, and by the help of Holy Spirit, all three are involved. This coming to God involves offering ourselves. Offer yourself. I won't give God anything that didn't cost me. 
Because if it didn't cost me, I'm not even moved about my offering. But when it costs you something, I'm going to tell you another thing that it does. My wife and I could give testimony to this because Holy Spirit has challenged us over this last year or so, stretched us. And we, we've always been givers, but we felt the leading to give more, pouring out, scattering seed everywhere. My God, you know, not to be known, not to be noticed at all, but to give as the Lord, because many times people had no, people don't know that they did. Come on, we we uh, we offer our arms in secret. We don't do it just for people to see. We don't do that. Amen. You're not supposed to do that. I'm gonna tell you something. When it touches you, it enlarges your faith. It raises your faith to a totally different, higher level because you are trusting God that when you place that value in everything that he says, that's not a loss. It's never a loss when you place this value on God because without him, you know, Jesus even said, uh, without me, you can do nothing. Without him, we wouldn't even be here. Without him, we wouldn't have healthy hands and come on, healthy bodies to be able to praise the Lord with, with. So when we come to him, amen, to worship, uh, to worship things, certain things happen. We bring our lives. We, we, uh, we come with our tired lives. Mm. We come with our lives, uh, even with unclean things in our lives against the beauty of his holiness. The scripture says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness and fear before him all the earth. So the, the coming to the Lord involves offering ourselves to God. To worship is this, is to quicken the conscience by the holiness of God. Our consciousness is quickened when we come into the presence by his consciousness. There's a God awareness that comes upon. He asks us to enter into his presence because he knows that no man can come before the presence of the Lord. Peter Marshall wrote that years ago, said no man ever going before the, going before the presence, coming before the presence of the Lord can go away the same. No man ever coming before the presence of the Lord can go away the same. You cannot go away the same if you've gone in there with, with intentional worship, woman at the well, worship in spirit and truth, it's an unfettered adoration toward the one who created you. It is intentional and it's in truth. Going in there, revealing, exposing yourself to him, because if there's anything undone in your life, he's, he's, he knows it. And he brought it to that woman when he was teaching her about worship. And he told her about herself. And she was convicted. Come on. Came out of that better than she was when she entered into that. Now, does that tell you something? We need to worship as the scripture teaches us to. So worship is to quicken the conscience by the holiness of God. He's holy. And it's to feed the mind by the truth, the truth, the truth of God. We need the truth of God. It makes us free. We are free when the truth, come on, is it, it's upon us and we um receive the truth, we're made free. It's to purge the imagination by the beauty of God. All oh. <laughs> God begins to show us his beauty. Come up, Moses. Mm. He hid him in the cleft of the rock so he couldn't see all of his glory. They believe that, you know, at that time, no man had seen the face of God at any time. The scripture says that. But Moses wanted to know him, but he tells us to seek his face. That's his presence. And in his presence, there's fullness of joy. And his right hand of pleasures evermore. In his presence is deliverance. In his presence is revelation. In his presence is inspiration. In his presence 
is joy and peace. Glory to God. So to purge the imagination by the beauty of God when we worship is to open the heart by the love of God. Our hearts are open now to receive. Um, hard places of, of plowed up praise Judah in uh, Hosea, uh, the prophet, he says, uh, Judah plows the ground. Judah means praise. Praise plows up hardness, hardness of heart. It plows through it because guess what? We're in the consciousness of God now. Uh, the mind is being fed by the truth of God. And the truth of God may expose exactly what we got going on or who we are. And that's a, that's a propensity or proclivity by our spirits that's, that he put in us, his spirit, to bring change, to bring forth that burden of God is to bring you into, come on, perfect posture with him, alignment so that God can be and do all the things. If sin is in our life, it'll be exposed in the presence. Come on, somebody. Because guess what? Sin is an affront to God. If we're sinning and we know it, you can't receive the blessings and the promises of God. It is for the children of God. Amen. Okay, so then to open the heart by the love of God and to worship is to devote the will to the purpose of God. So when we worship, we put our, uh, our frenzied lives, our rush. A lives, our busy lives, always, you know, our busyness into eternal perspective. And we see that God is great and that we are small and how much we need him. Uh, let me close out with this. What we endeavor to do is show you the importance. We're not done with the sacrifice uh, of praise yet. We're going to keep teaching on it. Amen. Uh, because it's so important. Hebrews 13, 15. Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord. I will. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to do what I have to do to praise the Lord. Uh, amen. We're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves. Uh, we're to assemble for worship. Amen. 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 Uh, we're to come together. We're to come together and worship the Lord. Uh, I, I like what... Uh, A.W. Tozer said, he said that worship is the missing jewel, the missing jewel uh, in, in many cases today. Worship should be right at the center. Uh, it's the missing jewel. We've lost, who's that president? The late president, Theodore Teddy Roosevelt said years ago, he said, we have lost the act of worship. What? We've lost the act of worship. A president said that. He says, you may worship God anywhere at any time, but the chances are that you will not do it unless you have first learned to worship him in some particular place and at some particular time. What did he mean by that? There must be a set time. You must consecrate a place and you're going to worship God. And he tells us, you know, we worship anywhere, spirit and truth. You don't have to worship in this mountain. You can worship at home. We're going to talk about an individual. We're going to talk about our family. We're going to talk about corporate. It's when we come together. And we come together at church. Come on, somebody. That's, that's corporate. When you come together in a setting with others besides yourself. He says, you must set a time and set a place. In other words, you know, God forbid that we have to schedule. <laughs> It should be the first thing on our agenda, like Jesus. Great while before the day, Mark 1, 35, he went into a solitary place and there he prayed. And you know, he acknowledged his father, he worshiped. He's praying on the right hand of the father. Now he's interceding for us. But in my syllabus, if you look at my forward, forward there, I say he's also the worshiper in heaven on the right hand of the Father. He prays and he worships. Yes, he does. Amen. Uh, giving you this, praise the name of the Lord. Well, I'll table that to the next time. I want to talk to you next time about how 
important worship is in the kingdom as stated in the scripture. We're going to bring together a whole lot of scriptures that tells you the preponderance of scripture. Of mostly the whole of scripture tells us that God wants to be worshipped. We find doctrines, doctrines of faith, doctrines, ordinances, they are important, but nothing, absolutely nothing, <laughs> is more important than worship. Amen. Glory to God. Well, thank God for you being with us. Thank God for you coming in today. Looking for many of you to come and be with us in uh, a fervent, hot, intense time of prayer for the family on our phone line this evening. And you don't want to miss it. You don't need to miss it because it may be the breakthrough that your family has been needed. Why not now? Why not today? Today is the day of salvation. Today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. But well, we always want to do this. I always want to give you an opportunity to sow into ministry. When we partner with ministries, God gives a blessing for the anointing, and the blessing that's on that ministry. We've learned that we sow, uh, we sow, my wife and I, our ministry souls into other ministries beside our own. You know, you don't just sow into your own self. You sow out. Amen. Amen. To reach out so that God can bring in. No outreach, no income. Sowing out. Amen. We sow to uh, what Jesus says, the poor you have with you always. We sow to those in need. We sow to those, amen, who have undertaken a vision. We have to sow into other vision. Come on. We have to support vision, the vision of other men. You know, if God gives us our own. We, we, we show that. So you can sow into this ministry should the Lord touch your heart. Only if you are led to, if you're inspired to, here it is on the screen, the cash app there. You can see it. Uh, I'll leave it there for a while. And the paypal.me forward slash praise the church. Uh, dollar sign PCCFAN. That's the um, cash app. And we will pray. Send us your prayer request. Uh, we're going to tell you how to do that. Send in your prayer request so that we can pray for you. If you want to get a prayer request in before the um, pray the prayer conference on the line today, if it's private, let us know that. How do I get it to you, Apostle? Well, we definitely want to lift you up in that. Amen. We want to lift you up in prayer. You can call our prayer line. Uh, not the prayer line, our ministry phone. Ministry phone. It's 501-983-2355. 501-983-2355. And the ministry email is pcc underscore F A N at yahoo.com. Email us a prayer request or even a testimony. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. We love to hear testimonies because it is a witness of God's power actually being activated in the lives of people. I mean, real, really, come on, real, real, real evidence that God is who he says he is. Amen. Because he's blessing. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent for. Has he said, will he not do it as he's spoken? And will he not make it good? God does what he says. He does exactly what he says. All right. Amen. You can also mail us uh, if you have a seed offering, you don't have any one of those devices to 
electronically uh, sow an offering, uh, a seed, you can uh, send it the old-fashioned way by mail, mailing us at Pray Center Church, P.O. Box 2043-2043, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72203. Write us a letter. Write us a letter. Tell us what God is doing. If this ministry has blessed you in any kind of way, we want you to let us know. Amen. And we will definitely communicate back with you. We will stand in agreement with you to a better than one. All right. All right. Well, I want to put up one last time the conference line for the prayer revival. There it is. 267-807-9663. And the access code is 577-327. Hashtag. We love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. And uh, there's nothing you can do about that. We're going to love you because love, love covers all sins. Love covers all faults. And we just appreciate you. We don't, we don't take it for granted. You can be doing other things with your time. Be blessed the rest of your day. And hopefully... You will connect on the line this evening for an awesome time of family prayer. God bless you.